You know, it is an interesting time. You and I were talking before we got going that, you know, there's kind of been a lack of information, and I think we're trying to look at this corporate earnings cycle to yeah. give us an idea of kind of what's to come uh, next year. When you look at corporate credit, what does it say to you about the health right. kind of our corporations right, right now? Right, right, right. So I think corporate America tells kind of a mixed story, especially on the credit side. On the one hand, as you just point out, corporate bond prices are at pretty high levels. Investment grade are at kind of cyclical highs as bond yields have come down. Does that make sense to you? It does because it's very interest rate linked. Okay. But, but the flip side of that is corporate America has been borrowing like mad. Uh, corporate debt's at a record high. Uh, it's up 50% over the last five or six years. Uh, and as you point out, earnings have rolled over and are coming down. So leverage is going up. But it's financial engineering. So it's, it's sort of it's helping the company to a certain extent. And the investors like it because it's viewed as a safe trade. But the reality is, is the quality underlying it is not that great. It's not that great. It's funny that you, you talk, that, talk about this because we have said how smart it was that companies were borrowing. There were such record yeah. low rates. They were you know, kind of working down some of that debt that had higher rates. But a lot of those companies borrowed money to do things like buybacks. Yep. Was that a smart strategy? Will it yeah. ultimately, I don't know, a year, two years, three years from now, will we look back and say this was not smart? I think it was a smart strategy to kick off the game a couple of years ago. But now the credit cycle is getting pretty extended. It's pretty advanced. And it's very difficult to tell if you're the company, you're sort of the main buyer in the market of shares and of other companies, and you're buying at a relatively high price point. Right. So it's going to be hard to recognize meaningful gains and dramatically improve your bottom line it, over the medium term. George, it's interesting because you say that we're kind of at that high point in the yeah. credit cycle, but does that also make sense? You've got credit cycles, you've yes. got highs and lows. Is it where we kind of should be yes. based on what we've had leading up to it? Yes. Cycles. This cycle, what's unique about it is I think it's lasting a long time, and I think it's going to continue to last a long time. It's a direct result of policy. Central banks around the world cutting rates, bringing interest rates lower, uh, negative yields in Europe and in Asia. Japan. The corp corporate sector broadly, not just here in the U.S., but around the world, have been direct beneficiaries of that. And so I think you know, the corporates themselves are taking their cues from policymakers, and they're making, I think, the right short-term decision because financing's cheap. They can, they can utilize that. They can help their earnings. The medium term is a bigger question, and, and leverage is pretty high by historical historical standards. But it's interesting, right? In the past, maybe we'd like to see a company borrow money to kind of invest in their business. Right. And whether it means capital expenditures, yes. new equipment, yeah. hiring more workers, we're not necessarily yeah. seeing that. Yes. Now, I think that's a big challenge. I mean, in the U.S., there's some capital spending. Not a lot, but there's some. And if you look at the aggregates, they'll tell you that nominally capital spending is going up, but as a percentage of earnings or other things, it's not still so lagging. I think where the bigger challenges are are in places like Europe and in Asia, where there's really not much capital spending at all. In fact, it's going the other way in some instances. And those central banks are pushing as hard as they can on rates to, to incentivize companies to, to, to lever up. And, it, and it's, it's not really following through. So it's a real challenge. And, and, and I think you know, borrowing all this debt um, it can make sense for a short period of time, but it's, it's not the final solution. It's not the final solution. Does it make you nervous, yeah. all this debt that is on corporate balance sheets? It, it does. It does. I mean, we have a pretty cautious stance as an investment team, as a strategy team. You know, what we're telling people is be, be cautious. You know, you want to lend to companies that have pretty stable cash flows. We like the consumer sector. We like telecom. Um, we're not, you know, we, we haven't gotten too excited about, about commodities just yet. It's still very volatile. And we still like the banks. The banks are pretty, uh, you know, been pretty consistent from a credit standpoint. Earner, credit quality is still pretty good. And they're, in the U.S. banks in particular, are pretty well capitalized. It's interesting that you bring up banks, right? And they're not expected to do great this, right. so this earning cycle. But are, is the outlook going into yeah. this uh, earnings cycle so negative on banks yeah. that that might surprise? I, I think it is. I mean, it, our, our equity analysts were, were talking about this this morning. Expectations have come down dramatically. Especially knowing you, kind of the credit picture yes. of banks. And, and well, I think if you, if you look at banks, banks from, from, a, from a credit perspective, what I like to say, it's good enough for credit. Meaning their earnings are fine, you know, they're going to have some volatility, and they're decelerating. The earnings are decelerating because of the global backdrop. But generally speaking, there's plenty of capital within the banking system. Earnings may not be fantastic, so it's not driving up multiples, but it's plenty to, to pay bondholders. And, and that's what we're trying to focus on. As I mentioned, you know, as we, before we got started, I just said, you know, we are just in this kind of interesting environment looking for any help we can in trying yeah. to figure out what happens later on this year. Um, 
What would you want to leave investors with in terms sure. of the corporate credit markets? So in corporate credit right now, I think there's two messages. Number one, first and foremost, it's late in the credit cycle. We're focused on what but I like to say. That cycle you say could go on longer. It can go on for a while longer, but we're focused on return of capital. Return on capital is nice, but in late stages of the credit cycle, you want to make sure you get your money back. That's number one. And then, and then number two, it, it, it really has to do with stay attached to your highest quality payer, which the U.S. consumer is in pretty good shape. The U.S. financials are in pretty good shape. Things like telecommunications are in pretty good shape. You know, broadly speaking, those sectors have... They're nice, stable cash flows and, and not a huge amount of borrowing requirements.